Well, a very good morning and nice to have you with us in this edition of the Topical Discussion where we'll be speaking to the architect of the censure plot, censure motion, um, uh, Honorable Theodore Sechikubo, who is now combing all corridors of parliament, asking members of parliament to raise enough signatures to throw out or to cause the resignation of the four commissioners of parliament who are being accused of allocating themselves 1.7 billion shillings um, as service award. While it c continues to gather a lot of controversy, we ask what lies ahead and how tough is the task for the legislator. While um, Honorable Quizera will also be speaking to us on the bigger picture about this, whether it's really focusing or, or boiling down to the fight against corruption or more of politicking for the cameras. Well, a very good morning, Honorable Sechikubo. Nice to have you with us. Thank you, and good morning, viewers. Very good morning, Honorable Quiz. Morning, and good morning, viewers. Well, how much interest do you have in uh, Honorable Sechikubo's petition? Which petition? <laughs> seeking to withdraw the commissioners from parliament, to, uh, from office. <laughs> you see, you're now asking me to, to now to answer before Sechukubo tells me. <laughs> That's another challenge. However, me and Sechukubo, we agree on, on about 80% of the issues we see in parliament and the country. First of all, viewers and, uh, and those who are listening to us through other se uh, social systems, is that uh, where did the country go wrong is a very big issue me I will be addressing. Where did we go wrong? Because when you look at uh, the issues of corruption uh, in the all agencies of government, uh, ministries, uh, legislature, uh, judiciary, and now parliament, th there is evidence of corruption in the parliament now. There is no question about it. But where did we go wrong and where did it start from? Originally, me, you know, to Sechukubo, I am a senior to him because I was in the Sixth Parliament. And Sechukubo later on came and also became uh, a commander there. Members of Parliament used it to have committees of Parliament under Article 90. And this leadership would be elected by the committees themselves, Article 90. So we would choose where we are going. And when we reach in the committee, we would choose among ourselves the, pa the, pers the person that has offered and he has competence and the ESCO method to choose to lead the committee. So if he has not delivered to the expectations of the, com the committee of that parliament, meaning affecting the working of parliament, the members would have mandate and the capacity to withdraw that person and replace him if he has not performed. Was there a commission then? No, there was no commission. Then we had also a parliamentary commission. A parliamentary commission is represented statutory. <coughs> it is what we call a statutory representation, where other agencies represent government or represent the commission. That's Article is it 87A, where they say there shall be a parliamentary commission, meaning that <coughs> the, mini one, the Minister of Finance will be a statutory representative from government. Prime Minister will be there. The Speaker. Deputy Speaker will be there. And then the leader of oppo uh, the opposition will have a person. Mm. And then the all parties, NRM would have people there. But for NRM to have people there, who would be the key appointing authority? It would be members of parliament. Now members of parliament, with the time, they abdicated their, work, their duty, their mandate. The committees of parliament under Article 90 are now, unfortunately, they are appointed without the participation of the members who they are going to chair. So the president, using his executive powers, appoints ministers. Ministers who are supposed to be answerable to parliament by way of going to the committees. Mm. In this case, now, after appointing the ministers who come to the committee, the president, and uh, because he's now the chairperson of, the, uh, of a party, he also appoints the leaderships of committees. 
meaning that the members of parliament no longer have say on who is appointed. So the person who comes there, the minister is there, appointed by the president, and the chairperson of the committee is appointed by the president or the chairman of a party. That's the where the problem started from. Then, who has the mandate? Who has the capacity to withdraw? That's a very big problem, which the country and the parliament must now reverse to go back to the original understanding of the workings of the committees. Thank now, you. when we come to Honorable Sit mm. uh, motion, mm. uh, it, 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 it says, of course, these people, in the getting money, it was not ethical. But there are things to analyze. Was the money in the budget? That's one you ask. If the money was in the budget, was it approved by parliament? If it was approved by parliament, did the president assent to the bill, appropriation bill, to become an act of parliament? Was the money there? That's one thing. Another issue is that, if the parliamentary commission decided okay. and you, you're asking these questions do you have answers eh? no wait okay now if the parliamentary commission sat and decided parliamentary commission is under cooperative governance system you work on a paper presented a paper a, a, a cabinet paper i mean a cabinet paper a body paper or a commission paper mm. that says we are going to discuss this and we are going to take these decisions means we are going to give that a, a service award is the service award provided for in our laws who qualifies for a service award. So if the member, nine members of the commission, nine members, mm. did all of them get money? So who is accountable? Who prepared that paper to give? And who gave the money? So you find that there is someone who received the money, in which case the commissioners, whether all or not all. But there is also someone who paid them. So if the act of paying and receiving was wrong, where do we go? This is what we are now still to, mm. to trying to find out. Who, who decided them. to pay? Who took a decision to pay? In which case, was there any board or any commission decision to pay? To pay. Was it a legal pay? Who made the payment? Who made the payment and who received? This is received. Can they deny? If they are now told that you received the wrong money, can they refund the money? Then, but what, would we, what is the role of uh, now? The party. The party is the one which said, we are appointing these members. Where is the NRM seca, uh, caucus? Where is the pa party caucuses? Where are they? Well, thank, thank you very uh, much. Uh, uh, Honorable Theodore Sechikubo, to what extent does your motion answer some of the questions that are being raised by Honorable Kwizo? Uh, thank you for this opportunity once again. To begin with, I'm happy that Honorable Eddie Quizera says he agrees with me and my colleagues, yeah. on, uh, the sponsors of the motion, he agrees with us 80%. It means we have moved some to some point. However, what I, would, what I would like to clarify from the outset is that there are two stages of this motion. The first stage where we are now is a petition seeking to have a matter placed on the order paper. This is not the stage where we are coming to prove, as Honorable Quizel has indicated, whether one is right or wrong. This is a stage that brings the motion and the issues onto the floor of parliament. You recall that several attempts to have this matter debated had been stopped or failed. But now the first leg, where we go by way of a notice of motion, we only need 177 members. To get it on the order. To get it on the floor of parliament. Then while there, a motion shall be tabled, where all the reasons that we think are pertinent to the motion shall be given and even explained with all the evidence attached and tabled on the floor of parliament, then those implicated members will have their day 
we have opportunity to respond to these, to challenge these, and even to welcome what Honorable Kwizera here is attempting to do. But this is a parliamentary process. At this stage, Mr. Angel, we are only wanting to have fairness. Let these matters be discussed. Let us put them to the open. Why would it take such a, a tedious process to get this matter, if it is really crucial, on the order paper of parliament? <coughs> That's why, from the word go, we had only sought the indulgence of the speaker. Can we have time to look at these matters? Because they are everywhere. We can't hide. The, 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 the most disturbing issue is that parliament as an institution is mandated by the constitution to perform the oversight function over all other agencies, ministries, and departments. Now, if we scrutinize and put to task all those agencies to force them to account, how come that when it comes to parliament, we look at it differently? And we should be the institution above. We should be the institution above so that we have the moral high ground to have these institutions to account. And we do this on behalf of the people. So to me, I don't want to sound despondent and resigned, as some members here are saying, <laughs> that you know it is. Yes, yeah, but, but the, the, do, do, do the, you the, really the, the uh, struggle. Do, do you wonder why it is being greeted by a lot of skepticism <laughs> and interpretation of politicking, spite? Uh, some members have cited spite because you were denied the chance to be a commissioner. Let yes. me tell you this. We have a list of members of parliament who applied to be commissioners. I didn't have my application there. 77 of our colleagues applied. 77. And from here, we are now on a television of a national character. This is a television where nothing but the truth must be spoken. Mm. Let any member let them access the file from the government chief whip. Because you see what happened. The government chief whip put up announcements that all members of parliament are eligible. And those interested in serving as commissioners of parliament, submit your applications. And thereby, members submitted their applications. And all the applicants were 77 in total. 77. My name is not amongst them. And I'm challenging you. My name is not amongst them. And even whichever way this matter ends, I don't have any aspiration to say to become a commissioner. We do this. W what exactly are you pursuing in this? No, once other than exposing parliament. Not exposing, not exposing, expose, not exposures. We were already exposed by parliamentary tradition. We were already exposed. It is in the public domain. But what we are doing now is to say, can we refocus, reclean ourselves? Can we regain our moral high ground as the parliament? Can we get back to where we are supposed to be? Where we are constitutionally mandated to be? Can we restore sanity in parliament? Is the 1.7 billion saga the biggest scandal parliament has recorded in recent days? Mr. Anjara, even a chicken thief once found guilty even stealing a chicken, or even a pen. You can't, the, 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 that shows you how, the, how, how low the country has sunk. To say that this is mere 1.7 billion, don't mind about it. But what does it speak to the moral turpitude? What does it speak to the integrity? Not only of the commissioners, by the way, it's not a challenge that is uh, that, that, uh, of, of the individuals named. But it is a challenge to the institution of parliament. I want you to understand my position. We are not saying, we are not, we are not saying that these are evil people. They are alien people. Mm. They are members of parliament. They are part of us. But we say, wait a minute. Yes, whereas we have all collective responsibility to the people who sent us to parliament. And we should stand as colleagues in parliament. But wait a minute. This is, this, this is person. And as you say, in the service award you are talking about, they, 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 they encrypted it in a way that the service award was person to 
holder. They were given the award as person holder, meaning that they bear all the liabilities and assets, the benefits and the disadvantages of that service award. And that's what we were saying. This is a house of 529 elected members. You can call it 559 mm. members of parliament. But we did not sit at any point to conspire collectively. The parliament out there, the parliament I come from, I can hear the, the, the despondency taking its toll on members, even you, the president of, uh, of, 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 of this program. I'm telling you there are men and women out there in that parliament, men and women of integrity, who think the country should move in a positive direction. And, and, those and are, are you one of them? And, and, and those, wait a minute, because you want to make me sound sanctimonious, mm. I'm not saying I'm holy. I could be having my shortcomings as any other human beings. But I'm saying, wait a minute, this is the minimum. And once you see it, you don't accept it. Whether it is done by Sechikubo or Kuzera here, why must you tolerate corruption? Why must you? And this one which has come into the public domain. I want to ask you, suppose we sweep it under the carpet. What is our standing in the eyes of the public? The 48 million Ugandans who cannot come to parliament, but they send us to represent them. How do they perceive of us? Oh, oh, honorable Why Edith. must we go for accounting officers, chief administrative officers, and other low-ranking persons for small amounts? What moral authority do we have anymore if we can't check ourselves and we say we, we, are, we, are, put, we, we, we are, you know, we are superimposing the rules of law and accountability and transparency on the rest of the institutions of the country? except ourselves. How does that come to that? Honorable Kwizera Hui, given the explanation from Honorable Sechikubo, mm. are you in a way persuaded or compelled to append your signature onto this very controversial motion? <coughs> you see the debate, uh, if you go to the debate of narrowing the signature. It's, it's important. You will, will you sign? You will, will now you? be undermining their, uh, I mean, undermining an effort to fight corruption. There's the effort. No, for now, but I want to tell for you, now the task is about collecting 177 signatures. No, 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 what I'm saying, what, and, what I, and what has brought me here is very clear. The country and the parliament is under siege because of corruption. O o Honorable Kwizera, will you say? Listen to me. I was in my constituency for the last two weeks, and everywhere you go, people ask, what's mm -hmm. wrong? The public opinion about parliament I mean, it would be a pretense to say that the corruption debate is not there. Mm -hmm. But people are asking, who has failed to do the work? Mm -hmm. That's the, a very big issue. Because uh, NRM is a, very big, uh, is a very big party and is the ruling party. And NRM is the sponsor of those candidates. Uh, many of them on the on the parliamentary commission. Mm. So what is the work of NRIM in its fight against corruption? That's what you ask. So should I do the work of another person? He has failed to do his work. Because there is enough reminder, there is enough information from parliament, from IGG, from police, from state house, or anti-corruption agencies are full with information, meaning that the head of state who takes a decision, the chairman of the party, the chairman of the caucus who is, uh, who is uh, the, the whip, they know all of this. So have they deliberately left it out for members to eat each other? Can't they do something? That's what I'm saying. So secondly, my colleague has really tried that, or a recall of us. Can this matter be debated? But here, you are reporting a police officer, you are reporting a constable to a police officer at the police station. The speaker is a member, is a chairperson of the commission. Mm. The parliamentary clerk is the secretary of the commission. And here you want to say, 
can we discuss these things? So we have more power and authority. In and the there focus. are accomplices in the in, in the I Senate. mean, there is a conflict of interest. There is a conflict of interest. And every member of parliament, uh, by the way, including the speaker, I would think that they say, this we have had enough. We need to regain our glory. We have had enough. Because corruption in Uganda or corruption in the parliament, whether you are a beneficiary or a participant, but you are going to be a victim in decision making. Because when people look at you in a public opinion, either you are going to be affected, either in a, you are benefiting, there are those who are benefiting, of course, who take the money. There are those who are participating, but there are those who are going to be victims in the people who are forming an opinion against parliament, and we are going to be all criminalized, which I wouldn't want the public, I want to appeal to the public. Like, before you criminalize every member of parliament, mm. know that there is a quiz that there is a search kubo. Me and the search kubo, I, I see him even in the, uh, the orthodox. He's a very serious man. We believe in God. And God is looking at all of us. Those who have failed to do our work, God is judging us. Then we also must be truthful okay. to ourselves, wait, to, truthful to ourselves and to other people. And we must do what we are supposed to do legally. Do you find Meaning that if... Mm. Do you find it intriguing that... Uh, Sechikubo is focusing on four commissioners and excluding the speaker, the deputy speaker, and others who would be on the list. You see, uh, I want to, me, I would widen the Sechikubo motion that the debate covers the whole commission and who took a decision because this one was received. So who took a decision to give them? So if people had listened to Honorable Sechukubo and asked members, and we it became tried. a debate, we, tried. we would we narrow down to the person who actually committed a <coughs> crime. But as we talk now, it is still uh, like a research paper. We have not concluded. But the effort to say now we must force parliament to, to debate, the owner of the order paper is the speaker and the clerk. They are not going to put it there. If they don't put that, what do we do? So that's it, why it's more the of an exercise in futility. This is like a, this is like a, 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 we are not going to court, but the appellant court is the NRM. So I am asking, why has NRM kept quiet? Because one of them, it is the one who sponsored and appointed those people, and the NRM is fighting corruption. So where is the NRM in all of this? Because the NRM is bigger than Parliament. Because the foundation of those members are what? NRM. So, what is NRM doing? S except for the what are the parties doing? Except for the publicity, do you see at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the tunnel, the Speaker of Parliament allowing this matter mm. to get on the floor of Parliament? Yes, uh, uh, I would like to allay the fears of my colleague, Honorable Eddie Quisera, and probably that of other members of Parliament. And give me confidence. Yes, mm. to allay the fears and give him confidence. There are two approaches. You remember we started it on the floor of parliament, I and Kwizera. Yeah. It wasn't taken. But at that time, we were only seeking the indulgence of the speaker. Can we have this matter debated, please? We are looking bad. Can we have it handled on the floor of parliament here? And she trusts you? No, no. Well, to me, she's the speaker. She's the Speaker of Parliament. But, 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 but for mm. me, my eye, I keep the eye on the ball. My eye on the ball. In spite of whatever was coming up, the Chimosho who was here yesterday, those can come. But those are, uh, you, you take it as the occupational hazards. But for me, my, I keep my eye on the ball. You remember the Speaker promised to cameras and the whole country that let's deal with the ministerial policy statements. We can have your issue debated later. Then we went to budget. We kept on reminding her later until when parliament was prorogued, meaning that the session was over. Now, at that point, we were seeking the indulgence of the speaker. But under our rules, Kagwa, we are proceeding by way of a notice of motion. And now this is self-executing, and I know Honorable Kizera will agree with me. 
the moment we file our notice to the clerk, uh -huh. then it, it becomes self-executing. The timelines are there within our rules, within which the speaker has to bring the, this, the, the, this motion on the, on the floor of parliament. Okay. Why, 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 why do you exclude the speaker and the deputy? No, 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 but, 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 but because this is a very important issue, like Honorable Kukiz was saying, that the speaker, this is the order people of the speaker and the clerk. I'm saying, under our rules, the speaker has no option but to have this matter debated on the floor of parliament. Honorable Kukiz remembers very well the oil bills, yeah. the, the oil debate we had. Once the indulgence, you see, you seek her indulgence because she's the one in chair and she's the speaker. <laughs> But if that fails now, <laughs> this process of a, not a notice of motion is self-executing, whether she wants it or not, this matter has to come on the floor of parliament. Okay. Once, we get, the the once we get the requisite signatures. Does the lukewarmness of your colleagues hmm. raise eyebrows? No, no, now you've raised a very important issue, which I wouldn't want to miss. Why are you excluding the speaker? We had a big debate, including even Honorable Kwizera here. We had a, a, a big engagement because at, uh, in the first place, we saw what was happening in NUP, the action they took against the rare member. Mm. We had our three members. Initially, we started with our own, but then we feared that it might degenerate into partisan politics, into a party affair. And yet, this is a matter of national importance, mm -hmm. which includes all members of parliament, irrespective of your color, or party. So that's how now Honorable Mpuga was added because he's the fourth commissioner and within the ambit, and once you have the audit trail of the money, he's a direct beneficiary. We thought now we should handle him not as NOOP, but as Parliament of Uganda. And the same way we're handling other commissioners. Now for the speaker, incidentally you are aware, and Honorable Kuzir is aware, that there is some other process. The IGG, Honorable Kuzir, is, is now has been instructed, and indeed she is, on, at first she was ambivalent. Ah, I, I, will, I, will, I will not investigate parliament. Let the Auditor General do it. She had run away from her cause, f from her duty. But I think right now she has been instructed and she's undertaking the investigation. That is another process. For us, we can't mix all. It is an investigation ordered by the president, whether with a, a request from the UK High Commission, it is, that one is outside our motion. That one is taking another process. But for us, we are, we, we are tasking our commissioners. These are commissioners of parliament. As we take a break. We are asking the them to, to, to account. How much concern do you have about the lukewarmness and the reservations that are coming from your colleagues? You, you would imagine that the, if this is a matter that brings together that is bipartisan, it would attract every member to come on immediately. Can I tell you? And append their signatures. Can I tell you? Mm. You know I'm a veteran in that field. Can I tell you? I'm being delayed here by this program. I'm <laughs> going to receive <laughs> signatures. What are you talking about? Because at the end of the day, each and every member, you see, once we have voted to parliament, we are all equals. But strong enough, Honorable Kwizera has told you, the debate about corruption in parliament is not only limited in the corridors of parliament. Mm -hmm. It is with the people. Yeah. And now the people are asking their members, their representatives, what, wha what is your position? Where are you standing on this point? And it is important, and I'm telling the country now, that each parliament has had its moment. And there is those decisive moments that come to parliament. Like we had the 10th parliament. Mm -hmm. The turning point of the 10th parliament was the Toji Kwatako debate, where we lost 92% of the members of parliament. They didn't come back. Because at that time, it depended on where you stand on this point. I remember there are some colleagues, members of parliament, who voted. I vote I, and then they duck inside the, 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 the seats. <coughs> but they had already been noted. I'm telling you the turning point of the 10th parliament was Toji Kwataku. The turning point of this 11th parliament is the position a member has to take a stand whether you are for the corrupt or you are for those who are not. And this one, and we shall vote openly. 
we shall make available to you the place. I, I think you're sounding coercive. No, I'm not you, coercive. You, you're trying to it coerce is, it is members, a question, It is a question of me. choice. No, it is a question of choice. Why must you not be accountable to your people? If you have, I'm telling you, if you see the kind of campaign is going on, before members come to parliament, I want to go and be like Sechikubo. And when Sechikubo now is, in the, is asking them, now can we stand together? Some are saying, wait, my signature, let me wait a moment. I'm coming. <laughs> but out there, as they are... As they are jeering to come to parliament, the issue is, I'm going to represent you people, stand on the side of the people, like to be counted in history. I want to be like Sechku. <laughs> and many <Okay. laughs> But now, Eddie, but, but, but now this is the point of just, just a second. We are taking a break. <laughs> uh, it, looks, it sounds like it's a moment of making the critical decision. Will you sign? Will you not sign? Now, I want to tell you that some of us who do research, social research, mm and governance research. Mm. Actually, this one has now come to, to almost feed into my conclusions of my research about governance in Ugandan parliament. Parliament commission should now be independent, comprised of independent uh -uh, members. Uh -uh, honorable Cuisine, That's will, what you I'm sign, sign. will you not so sign? So now, because now, you see, we are looking at it, co conflict of interest. If the parliamentary commission is to perform, it should be a commission like Public Service Commission, Educational Service Commission, Judicial Service Commission, to avoid the conflict of interest. That's where members are now. Why should there be a commission anyway? What is the motivation? Honorable President, mm. will you sign, will you not sign? But uh, we are now debating. This is not where to sign from. Uh -uh. Uh, when I am satisfied, I will sign. You are not yet satisfied. I am not yet satisfied. Mm. Let's take a very short break and okay. return with more questions lingering about uh, Honorable Sechukwo's motion. Who will sign? Who will not sign? And what does it mean? Good morning.